Uh, first up is Marlow FM's The Eco Show with Dave Hampton. Uh, tonight he's being accompanied by Pat Redding, one of Marlow FM board directors. Dave and Pat, these next 10 minutes belong to you. Hey, thank you very much, Steph. Um, can I just have some thumbs up if you can hear me all right? Volume good? Not shouting too much? Cool. You're listening to Milo FM 97.5. Not really. Uh, hello, everyone. Wonderful to be asked to say a few words about the Eco Show tonight. And dare I say it, to prize open the green can. Um, I have the advantage that I'm reading off a script, so I can't see if you're groaning or pulling faces. Uh, boy, was it hot today but not as hot as the Arctic earlier this week. 38 degrees centigrade, 100 Fahrenheit. Almost sounds like a horror movie, doesn't it? So Marlow FM is just one strand of all the things that I get involved with in pursuit of climate justice on this planet of ours, as all of you do. And also in this beautiful town where I've lived and loved and raised a family this last 37 years. Uh, very briefly about me, I quit a pretty top career as an award-winning sustainability leader 15 years ago because things just weren't happening anywhere near fast enough. Exasperated, I tried many things, turning to the media, to activism, uh, even to politics. Yes, I stood to be your Marlow MP back in 2015. And I even tried, would you believe, climate stand-up comedy, truth be told, as the, wait for it, carbon, 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 carbon comedian. And yes, the humour comes and goes as well, but that's another story. And I don't want you laughing at me tonight, perhaps. Perhaps I do. For me, humanity's response to the cl climate emergency is disgracefully slow and woefully inadequate, as you will most likely have heard today, yet again on the news, as the government's own climate change committee says that we're way off track for a livable future. And that's livable in our kids' lifetimes, not just our grandkids. So basically, um, and I think I can say this because I'm not on radio, we're pissing petrol on our own children's very existence. It's been coined nepos, neposide, like nepotism, like ecocide but killing our own close relatives. Anyway, that's all the jokes out of the way now. You're listening to The Eco Show. It's every Monday evening, 7 to 9 p.m., and it's Marlow FM's Green Issues, Eco-Friendly and Planetary Justice show. The show's brought to you by an amazing team of all-volunteer presenters. I will mention them all, and it's coordinated by myself, yours truly. Informative content, inspiring interviews, and very beautiful song choices, um, not by me, by our guests. The very first weekly show was nine years ago, the station's very first week on FM radio. Previously, it was just available online, and now we are FM and online too. And we're in our 10th year. Interestingly, I hope, and as you'd expect, nearly all of the 24 speakers who Steph has lined up for you here with Marlo Can over the next three Thursdays have appeared on the show. Many are eco show regulars, and some are even fellow presenters covering rotating weeks. So to the two or three speakers who have not yet been on the Eco Show as guests, please see me later and we will fix that. Last but not least, thank you to the many of you who've Zoomed in tonight, dear listeners. May, maybe you've appeared on Milo FM yourselves or tuned in. Thank you, every one of you. So the team, well, it's growing very regularly. We have Karen Feakin, who joined seven years ago, Sean Herschel a couple of years ago, and Lucy Ashburner and Dora Hargitay to or some new additions this year. And I know Dora's tuned in now. Thank you, Dora, for tuning in. Between us, we've put out over 450 two-hour shows without too many repeats. Um, and yeah, not to forget my awesome Mile FM colleagues, including Pat, who present on other shows, many of whom are increasingly touching on climate, ecology, and social justice. In our very first year, we mostly featured the many original members of Milo's Transition Town nine years ago plus some national and international guests relevant to the transition movement. For example, it's founder Rob Hopkins, and I'm gonna scrap the long list of names, but we've had some really tip top eco voices on the show. And many of those interviews are just as relevant today. Indeed, some are archived on a SoundCloud account. You can find them under the name Carbon Coach. So starting to wind up now, uh, I know that Pat only needs three or four minutes, so I've eat, eating into that a little. But local guests we've had, of course, Andy Rackstraw and Mark from Saddle Safari. We had the wonderful Liz McKean from BBC Newsnight before her tragic premature death. We had Tom Baker 
otherwise known as Doctor Who, who spoke out very boldly on climate change while there were still a few local people peddling false doubt about the science reality. We had local cycling Olympian William Moore, who was one of the co-founders of TTM and a fierce force for good who helped get Moller riders up and cycling as well. Sadly, he's moved to Wales. Heston Blumenthal was on, predicting that we'd all be eating insects by now. Suzanne Brown and Jocelyn Towns appeared before they were mayor. Ed Shine was on before he was asked to turn on the Christmas lights. And we've kept an ear to the ground for emerging global movements as well. Three years ago, we gave 16-year-old Nadia Nazar, the USA founder, co-founder of This Is Zero Hour, a platform before Greta Thunberg was famous. This is all sounding a little bit self-congratulatory. I hope it isn't. But we were playing SOS from the kids, the song last year, before they made it into Britain's Got Talent. And as this is radio, I'll give you a quick blast now. I've no idea if you can hear that. So another speciality of the show is inviting celebrity Olympians. We've hosted over a dozen wonderful Olympians, Helen Glover, Greg Searle, and Prof Greg White. And for me, when people like those speak out, saying that this stuff matters, you get a hell of a lot more traction. So last few words, I'm just gonna quote from Steph, uh, who, who does a wonderful blog, Meet the Five Rs, and you'll hear help more from her on that next week. Steph says, hosting a radio show works for a number of reasons. First, a radio show is mass media, it can reach a broader audience. People listening to their local radio station may come on an eco, come up against an eco show by chance, simply because they're tuned in. They could be just in their cars on the high street. Second, reporters and journalists don't always get it right. Local people involved in climate action can provide their community with information from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Thirdly, radio is a relatively low stress form of media, although for some reason I'm stressed tonight, especially compared to television where people can feel uncomfortable in front of a camera, radio is more palatable. A relaxed atmosphere within a radio studio can result in genuine interaction, something the listeners pick up on, like a fireside conversation, riverside conversation and thus be more likely to buy into the ideas and projects being discussed. Lastly, radio offers a wide lens. One programme can host any number of guests and thus present a broad cross-section of climate action related events and projects in the community or further afield. So that's it for me, all we've got time for. I do hope you'll join us all on your local community eco show over the weeks and years to come. And next up, I believe, is Pat Redding. But first, back to Steph in the studio, as it were. Thanks, Steph. I'd like to invite Patricia Redding to last two minutes of this section for thank an you. I'll Speak fast. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, great to hear, be here to support Dave in, in the amazing initiatives that he has achieved within Marlow FM. Um, we absolutely applaud the Marlow Can initiative as a bunch of directors, and uh, we will look to support you wherever we can within the broadcasting code, there are some things we can do, some things we can't do. And one of those things is looking at whether uh, the, the coronavirus silver lining is it's given us the opportunity to review our scheduling. Uh, we've changed the schedule around because of uh, keeping distancing within the studio, but it dis, dis, does give us the opportunity to look at the schedule going forward from probably the autumn onwards. And one of those things would be to increase our green profile and put in another a daytime program uh, that will have would have um, sort of Marlo Can could totally spearhead that with Dave as well. And I think that could be a fantastic opportunity to get the stories, the messages heard across Marlo FM. And so that's something that we are actively looking at going forward uh, and. Um, really admire respect everything that everybody is doing within the Malokan initiative and as I said anything we can do to support it we are happy to do that. Thank you Pat. 